It's just, it comes down to guidance in the sense that, uh, like for traditional mystics and saints, you know, they, they reached a certain point in mind, we'll say, where they could see that, they could just see that it's all a projection. So there was nobody out there to save, nobody out there to teach, you know, no world out there to redeem. They're like, hmm. And then, and basically just went deeper and deeper into the stillness, and in, in some sense, it was more like, like there was no real sense of, of needing to pretend to interact with the world. Like if we, we looked at some of the traditional mystics and saints, the reason why they never locked their houses and their cars, because guess why? They didn't have <laughs> houses and cars. <laughs> Buddha, you know, it's like, we didn't have to worry about too much about insurance, you know. Should I insure my bowl? <laughs> what do you say, Spirit? Should I, you know, I mean, it's like, you know, should I, my, oh my, should I insure my bowl and my loincloth? What kind of policy? How many, how much is that going to cost a month? You know, it's, you can see from traditional mysticism that they're, they were so simple and devoted that they basically went around with a loincloth and a begging bowl, and that sufficed, you know, for Buddha, that was enough. And with Jesus and the Apostles, you know, there was some things. He was more of a public uh, mystic, Jesus was. So he did run into things like government. Remember, the, but he's traveling with the Apostles and they have to go. They're going into the temple to do some teachings and you cannot go in to the temple without paying the temple tax. You see, now, now we're getting a little more into interacting with what seems to be time and space. Uh, and then you know, Jesus had one of them go and get the money. I think it was in the Bible, out of the mouth of a fish, you know, it can, comes in all kinds of ways, but still they had to pay the temple tax. Nobody's going into that temple <laughs> without paying that temple tax. And to the extent that if you reach the state of bliss and happiness and joy, and you're still used in ways where you seem to interact with, with people, and you seem to move through time and space, you, you aren't you know, it's not that you're asked to, like, to overthrow those kind of laws. So, in terms of, of locking doors or getting insurance or so on and so forth, it would be, it would just be based on the guidance in terms of, um, like with, with insurance, you know, we've talked about that many times, you know, if, if we're doing things that involve vehicles, in fact that's just what we were talking about this morning, we're getting ready to go to Australia, where we were down there with you, and we have a couple flights, maybe just flights down to Melbourne, but most of the, the, the places we're going to go down in Australia are going to probably be by vehicle. Mm -hmm. And then with, uh, with a group of us messengers and with Noel going, we've got a group of, you know, what was there like six, seven, six or seven of us. Um, we were just waiting for the guidance about, okay, how do you want us to do this, and, and now it's come in for us to get a Honda Odyssey seven-seater van uh, for, to use down there. Not to rent it, but it'll be part of a church, just like we've talked about maybe having a church over here, or some, some kind of symbols like that in Europe, you know, under living miracles. So this is a practical thing. So. So you get your seven-seater Honda Odyssey, and then you, you still have to pay your tax on it. It's about $800 tax, and then tags, and license plates, and whatever is required, insurance, and whatever. And though that, that little seven-seater van will probably serve us well down there, uh, probably in the months to come, and probably beyond, you do have to go through all the steps and hoops that the rest of the population have to go through if they were going to buy a Honda uh, van. You know, without trying to go back into your mind and say, is this spiritual or not? It's just, it's props. It's like, those are like props that are coming in to use there. Um, I did have some friends of mine who, who had a spiritual community in Denver, Colorado, and they were like, they were in downtown Denver, and they really 
we're this thing that, okay, we're going to be really spiritual. We're going to be super spiritual. We're not going to lock our doors. You know, because it's, well, why would we want to lock our doors? If we've got nothing to fear, why would we lock our doors? And it was hilarious because I got there and they had, people had come in, they'd taken beds and dishwasher and I mean, <laughs> television sets and we, we could, probably couldn't have these kind of movie gatherings at that kind of place because they were trying to be so spiritual at this particular part of downtown Denver <laughs> that the neighbors were like, hey, this is good. it's like the free store. <laughs> they go out to meditate and they're gone at such and such a time. You just walk in there, doors are right up, wide open and get some TV sets, a dishwasher, microwave, whatever, you know, stock up. You know, it's, so it's not, it's getting away from the rituals of what's spiritual, about locking doors or not, or having insurance on vehicles and so forth. Usually, for us, again, it's, it's what's, if it comes down to a thing, it's like what's required by law. I know a lot of places that I've seen to live, as far as in the dream world, they do have, the states where I've lived, they do require, uh, it's called liability insurance for uh, vehicles. You can't, you can't get your driver's, your plates uh, for the car to even drive unless you have proof of liability insurance, you know. So, we don't sit around in our peace house and have big sessions about, you know, how unspiritual it is to have uh, liability insurance. It's more just, those are the props. And we just continue on to share the ideas without taking them seriously. Another one is reciprocity. You know, reciprocity is exchange. And anybody who knows me is when I go into McDonald's to get a burger or a, a cup of orange juice or something, I don't get into a big dissertation with the guy at the at the counter <laughs> who's like saying, what's it going to be? And I say, you know there's no reciprocity. God did not create reciprocity. <laughs> now give me that orange juice and hamburger. <laughs> and then, you know, there is no reciprocity. I will not be giving you something. I do not believe in exchange. You know, it's like, you know, no, you have a <laughs> joyful... Want this burger. <laughs> that's right. God and, did not create this burger. That's God did not... God did not create hunger, the guy says. <laughs> Why do you need a burger? <laughs> we had a funny encounter down, because some of you know Lisa's one of our messengers of peace, and uh, we were down in, uh, in uh, Australia, at, uh, what was the place where we were up there? Noosa. Noosa. And uh, I'd been going down there for a couple of years, so the people around there, started to know me a little bit and everything, and, and this one place, this guy, it was a little shop where they sold little kind of things, all kinds of things, and, and he had heard, they had some people from one of my retreats before that had come in there and say, oh, we're going over to listen to this man speaking on spirituality and everything, and so he knew of me, the shop owner knew of me and everything, and, and uh, one of our messengers went over there and, and Lisa was buying was buying a pack of cigarettes from this guy at the shop and she started striking up a conversation. They started talking about peace or spirit or God or something. And then and then Lisa's talking a little more and the guy's she's picked out her brand of cigarettes and he's got it he's got it in in his hand, the shop owner, and then she says she says, Yeah, I'm over here, I'm here with David Hoffmeister and and the guy said, I know I know who David Hoffmeister is, and Lisa said, oh really, good, and she says, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm part of his uh, messengers of peace, and the guy who's got the pack of cigarettes in his hand goes, oh really, and what is, what is this for, and Lisa's like, oh. and the guy just goes like this, and just throws the, <laughs> the shop owner just throws the cigarettes <laughs> over his shoulder, like, like, out with those cigarettes, <laughs> and then Lisa's like, <laughs> and he goes, you got a reaction with that? You got a problem going on with that? <laughs> so, so you never, <laughs> you never know with these kind of encounters, you know. 
you really have to just be very prayerful. <laughs> he just took the cigarettes and threw them over his shoulder. Then she came back and told us all, and we just were howling, laughing. Because, you know, it wasn't just your typical, you know, thank you very much. <laughs> I could go out and smoke the cigarettes, so. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> That was one of my first lessons when I came to the Peace House around this form thing because I bought this $200 DVD on how to make movies and it didn't work properly so I went to return it to the post office and the guy asked me at the post office, would you like a tracking number for that, 50 cents? And without even being open, you know, I'll do what I would ask, what I'm asked. I just said no because the thought was nothing ever happens to me. So I go back home, and it turns out when I went to get my refund, they never received it. And it was like, oh man, I had like a $200, all this. But the lesson for $200 was to just be so open and prayerful to the use of the symbols, you know, 50 cents to get tracking number to prove I sent it. And the plan is, is helpful, so it's kind of neat how that got deleted. Yeah, that's, it always is to stay tuned in. Because when we're tuned in and we're listening, truly there is no problem ever. There's no perception of a problem. But but as long as there's a little bit of a of a thought, of maybe that could be this or it could be that or a little hesitation or whatever, then that's just another forgiveness opportunity. And it's all designed to, to take us to a place where there's no hesitation. You know, we're just we're being taken. So we it's really the practice of eliminating doubt completely from our mind and once you get onto that, then it's like, wow, okay then, every, every situation is just an opportunity to eliminate doubt from my mind. Kind of to go on, we'll call it like, Holy Spirit GPS, or Holy Spirit Autopilot, and just be totally in the flow of it, without any kind of consciously, not really having to ask all the time. You know, initially we do need to ask, because we're coming out of an ego addiction, of the I know mind that thinks it knows something, and we do need to be prayerful and stop and ask, but then after a while, as you become asking more and more, almost like that's your your mode, then he does say in the rules for decision that you don't you don't have to ask constantly, you know, you just, it, you just make it a good habit, and then if you get more into that good habit of turning to the Spirit and asking, there will come a point where you'll just merge with that spirit and it's like everything in the whole world will merge and there won't even be this back and forth asking, help me, help me, help me. You'll just, you will be the help. You will merge and be, be the help. You, you will extend the help in whatever way it comes automatically, whether it's a smile or some words of wisdom or just, you yeah. know, laughter.